In this lesson from 7-6 Ground School Chick, we're going to talk about gyroscopic instruments. But first, a quick reminder that if you find today's lesson helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future private pilot ground school lessons. Also, if you're ready to get step-by-step -step guidance and mentorship that makes you feel confident, proficient, and at home in the sky. Get in-depth instruction and get signed off to take your FAA written exam by a former airline ground school instructor. Send me a message at chickswhoflyofficial at gmail.com to become a student online directly with me or click the link in the description. This material will come up on your FAA written exam and the oral portion of your check ride, so let's dive in. There are three gyroscopic instruments in your airplane. The attitude indicator, the turn coordinator, and the heading indicator. These are considered gyroscopic instruments because each one depends on a gyroscope to function. They can be driven by electricity or by air suction. The gyro is a heavily weighted spinning disc that is able to maintain its position and orientation. Gyros operate based on two principles, rigidity in space and precession. Rigidity in space speaks to a gyro's ability to remain in a fixed position in the plane in which it is spinning. By mounting the gyroscope on a set of gimbal rings, the gyro is able to rotate freely in any direction. If the gimbal ring rotates, the spinning gyro will remain in the same plane in which it was originally spinning. So essentially, as the airplane moves, it is rotating and moving about the gyro while the gyro remains in the same position. The other characteristic of the gyro is known as precession. In simple terms, gyroscopic precession happens when you push or pull on a spinning object. Instead of reacting right away where you push, it reacts about 90 degrees ahead in the direction it's spinning. If we use the propeller as an example, since it is a rapidly rotating disc, when the tail of a tailwheel airplane lifts off during takeoff, the propeller disc rotates forward. This forward rotation can be compared to someone pushing on the top of the disc. As a result, the force is exerted 90 degrees ahead, specifically on the right side, causing the nose to be pushed to the left. This means that sometimes, the instruments may have some degree of error, such as a slow drifting and minor errors in the instrument's indications. Fortunately, our gyroscopic instruments have ways to either automatically or manually correct for this precession error. We mentioned earlier that the instruments can either be powered by air suction or electricity. Different instruments are powered by different sources so that if one source fails, the other source will still work. The attitude and heading indicators are typically powered by air suction, and the turn coordinator is normally powered by electricity. The gyros spin because of air being sucked in around it. A vacuum pump connected to, and powered by the engine, draws filtered air from the cabin through the instruments, causing the gyros to spin. Then, it dumps out the air into the engine compartment. The attitude indicator is an instrument used to show the attitude or position of the aircraft relative to the horizon. It indicates pitch and bank or roll. The attitude indicator, with its miniature aircraft and horizon bar, displays a picture of the attitude of the airplane. The relationship of the miniature airplane to the horizon bar is the same as the relationship of the real aircraft to the actual horizon. The banking scale shows degrees of bank from level flight. The relationship of the miniature airplane to the horizon bar should be used for an indication of pitch and bank angle. For example, nose high, nose low, left bank, right bank. An adjustment knob is provided with which the pilot may move the miniature airplane up or down to align the miniature airplane with the horizon bar. The turn coordinator is used both to indicate the rate and quality of the turn. It displays a miniature airplane, which moves proportionately to the roll rate of the airplane when the bank is held constant. The turn coordinator indicates the rate of turn. These two tick marks indicate level flight. The other two tick marks indicate what is called a standard rate turn. The ball indicates whether the angle of bank is coordinated with the rate of turn. The turn coordinator can also be used as a backup source of bank information in the event the attitude indicator fails. A standard rate of turn is one that takes two minutes to complete a 360 degree full circle. Beneath the miniature aircraft, you'll see an inclinometer housing a small ball floating in kerosene. The ball can freely move left and right 
and is sensitive to aerodynamic forces responding to changes in balance. The idea is that the ball should always be centered, indicating coordinated flight. If aerodynamic forces become imbalanced, the ball will shift left or right. This happens when there is either too much or too little rudder being used for the current amount of bank. This instrument is typically powered by electricity. The heading indicator detects how the airplane is turning and shows the direction it's heading in 5 degree increments. The tick marks are labeled every 30 degrees with the final zero omitted. For example, the number 3 indicates a heading of 030 degrees. 21 indicates a heading of 210 degrees. The heading indicator does not have a built in ability to detect the heading, so at the beginning of every flight, after the engine is running, the pilot must use the knob on the instrument to realign it to the correct heading. We do this by looking at the aircraft's magnetic compass. Due to gyroscopic precession, the heading indicator can slowly drift away from the correct heading and must be periodically realigned with the magnetic compass roughly every 15 minutes or so. Also, if the vacuum pump is not producing sufficient suction, when the engine is idling, the drift may be greater. I hope today's lesson was helpful. If so, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future private pilot ground school lessons. And if you're interested in doing your private pilot ground school online directly with me and have me sign you off to take your FAA private pilot written exam, please reach out at chickswhoflyofficial at gmail.com.